Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a Power App that can scan receipts using the Form Recognizer API. So let's get started. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. In this video, we'll be using three things, Power Apps, Power Automate, and the Azure Cognitive Services Form Recognizer API. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we'll uh, create a resource using the Form Recognizer API and get our keys and stuff. And then we'll create a flow that uses the Form Recognizer API to scan a receipt and get that data from the receipt. And then we'll send the data back to a Power App and we also create an app which actually has the the interface to see the data from the scan receipt. So you might be thinking, why are we using Form Recognizer API? So Form Recognizer API is Azure's kind of the API that you can use to analyze forms, receipts, and other kind of key value pair data. They already have a pre-built custom model for receipts, so you don't have to train any models or anything. You can just use this model out of the box to scan receipts and then get that data and process it and save it in whichever data source you want to save it. So let's jump on and create the Form Recognizer API resource. Before we start creating, let's have a quick look at the demo of the solution. So here you can see I have a Power App already created where I can click on the scanner receipt, which will ask me to attach a photo. Uh, in this case, I'm using it on my PC, so I'll have to select a file, otherwise I can if I'm opening my phone, I can select a photo. So I did upload a receipt and now it's uh, analyzing it. And within a few I guess, seconds, we'll see the details that were there in the receipt. All right, so you can see the merchant name came up, the merchant address, phone number, transaction date and time, the items inside uh, the receipt, and also the subtotal, tax, tip, total everything and I can kind of click on this to have a look at the receipt so you can see the receipt here and then just click on upload receipt and this will add it to a SharePoint list which I already created here so we'll just refresh it and we'll see that in the list all right so it showed up it has all the details and then if I click on it so you can see the customized power app here with the receipt image and all the details. I can make some changes even here and then hit save. This is how you can get your receipt data into any data source. Here in this case, I have I'm using a SharePoint list. So let's go and start creating now. So the first thing that we want to create is the Azure Cognitive Services API resource. If you go to your Azure portal, just search for form recognizer, and then you'll see that form recognizer option and then once you click on that, you'll be given this, this form, which you can enter in the details. You can add a name for it. You can choose a subscription. Now there is a pricing tier, which is free. So 500 pages per month, you can do it for free. So for testing, you can use that. Then if you don't have a resource group created, you'll have to create a new one and then confirm and then create. Now I already have a resource created. So this is my resource that API guy forms. I can click on keys and endpoint to get my key. Uh, so you, these are the two keys. I can copy this and paste it um, somewhere so that I can use it in my flow later. And uh, here on the overview page of the resource, you can see what kind of quota you have. And as you kind of keep using it, it will kind of uh, keep reducing. So you can keep a track on how many of you're using. So let's uh, go now and create our flow, which will access this resource. So let's start working on our flow now, which will access the Form Recognizer API and then send the data back to Power Apps. So I started the flow with a Power Apps trigger. The second thing that we want to add is uh, we want to get the image from the Power App. So we'll use a Compose and this will be Ask in Power Apps. And the next step that you want to do is we want to create an, an HTTP request. This would be a post because I'm sending basically an image data to it. The, the URL needed for this. So this is my URL, but in your case, your URL will be a bit different. And the URL that you need to access will be available here. So this, this is the endpoint. 
you can copy that and then followed by form recognizer slash v2.0 preview slash prebuild slash receipt slash analyze. So this is the endpoint that is used to scan a receipt and uh, kind of get the key value pairs from that. For the headers, we will be putting in two headers. One is for the content type. Now the content type is, uh, is the content type of the, the document that you're sending. So it could be a JPEG, it could be a PDF. For the API to understand that, you need to send what type of data it is. So for the content type, you're going to use an expression, which is going to be something like this. The first thing that I'm doing is I'm converting the data URI, which I get from Power Apps to binary data. And then that to, to convert, so basically the data URI that you get from Power Apps will have double quotes in the, the initial part of the string and the end. So you want to remove that. I know it's a bit weird issue, but this is how I kind of solve it. So I replace the double quotes with blank so that I get rid of the, the initial and the end double quotes in the string. So that's my data URL and then I'm converting it to binary. Now the, the other thing that I need is I need the content type. So this is just converting it to binary. That's not what I want here. I want the content type and that is a property that you can access using this dollar content slash type. This is how you get the type of the document. So I'll click on OK. And um, you can see the expression here just to make sure that it went through. The next thing that I want to add is the API key. So this is the header that I need to use for it. And this is my API key. Now, if you're wondering where do I find all these headers that I need to pass to that API call, you can go to this link, which I'll paste it in the description of the video, um, which has all these endpoints that you can access for the form recognizer API. So there is this analyze receipt, and here's the place where it will uh, give you all the request kind of URL that you need to use, and then um, the headers that you need to pass along with it. So uh, we have now created that HTTP request. We do need to pass the, the data. So that's going to be passed in the body. And this is going to be the data URI to binary. So you need to pass the binary data. You're not passing any URL or anything. You're sending that raw binary data of that document to this endpoint. So let's paste that expression. The data URI to binary. Click on OK. And now we have this first HTTP request. We rename it to HTTP analyze receipt. Now, after this, we, so this just analyzes the receipt, but it doesn't give you the analyze results. It's yeah, it takes a while to get the analyze results. So how do you find that out? You need to send another API request to get the status of the analysis. And if it has succeeded, you can then get the data from it. So we have to keep making that call until we get a succeeded status. And to do that, we'll kind of go through a loop. We'll put a delay of five seconds between each calls and then keep checking if the status has been succeeded. So let's uh, first set up the variable, analyze status. We'll say it's a string. And the next thing that you want to do is it will be a do until loop to one two, and I'll show you what we put here in a in a minute here. So the next thing that I want to do is create an HTTP request, and this would be a GET request because you're not sending anything; you're just trying to get the status. And the request URL for this one is something that you get from this call. So you need to use that the header from this call. So when you make that request. Inside the response headers, you get an operation location. So we uh, do have the URL now. Uh, we don't need anything else in this call. It's just a simple GET request. Now we do need to pass headers though. So this header, the content type for this is nothing but just application slash JSON so that you can get the data in a JSON format. And then uh, you do need to pass the key again in this call as well. So now we have created this get request to, to get the status. Now, 
we do need to take that status, see if it's succeeded or not. This set variable will be basically that analyze status. And this is gonna be from this HTTP request. So we will say HTTP, that's just called status. So you wanna keep doing this until this, this variable analyze status is equal to succeeded. So we do have this whole thing created now. Uh, the last step that we need to do is send the data back to Power App. Now, if you notice you used a HTTP request, so this is a premium connector. You will need a Power Apps per app or a per user plan or something which is seeded with Dynamics if you are gonna use it in context with your Dynamics data. Because you've already used the HTTP premium connector, why not use the response premium connector as well? So we'll use request response and send that data back to Power App. Now, we do need to paste a schema for this. We'll get that once we run the call at least one time and then we'll pass that data back to Power App. So we have our flow created. The next thing that we wanna do is create an app. We will insert a media upload option so that we can get the, the receipt. So the next thing we wanna do is on change of this image, we want to call our flow. So you click on Power Automate and search for our flow. So it needs the image, which we will send using the JSON functions because we want to send the base64 data for the image. Um, so this is uploaded image one dot image and the JSON format for it would be JSON format dot include binary data. Close that. We will have to save this data eventually, but for now we will just run the flow so that we can see what uh, if the flow is running fine or not. So what we'll do is we'll click on play, tap, insert a receipt, and now the flow is running. Current one, okay. This is the one that gets succeeded. We'll click on that, and you can see it analyzed the receipt. So this was the first HTTP request. And then the, the second one, which is inside this 212 loop. One thing that I did add is a delay. So I do have to add a delay of five seconds between each of the calls that I make, um, just because it it could take time for the results to come. So I just put a delay of five seconds. You cannot put a delay of less than five seconds, by the way, in the flow. And the second HTTP request was to check the status and see if the, the status is succeeded. So in this case, you can see the status was succeeded. And what we can do is we can copy this whole thing so that we can use it in the response action. And also you can see the other kind of fields that we got along with it. So, so we successfully created an HTTP kind of request flow to get the results from the, the receipt. Now, the only thing pending is sending it back to Power Apps. So let's edit this flow. Inside the response action, we want to change the schema. So we'll click on advanced options and click from generate from sample and paste this whole response that we got and just click on done. So this will generate uh, a schema, a JSON schema, which the which Power Apps can then understand what kind of data it's getting back. So we basically get a whole table and then we'll um, use that data and put it into some labels. So let's click on save here and let's go back to our app in this app, we will just close this. And uh, this was probably because of one of the previous errors. We will insert a label just to get the, um, let's say the merchant name and we'll get the, the total amount. So let's put this, let's see, control V, and this would be our merchant amount, or the total amount. So for this, what we we'll first do is we'll change the action here. And one thing that we will have to do because we changed something in the flow, we'll have to remove the flow and add it again. So now we have this that flow added here. We'll just remove it from the on visible property because we don't need it there. But for the on change property of this, so we'll use a clear collect. And we'll say receipt results. And 
towards the end of this, we will add a dot. So we have a bunch of things here, but in this case, we need the analyze result. And we'll close that here. So let's try this out. We'll change the picture. Let's use the receipt. Uh, so it did run fine, but we'll have to check if we caught the data into the collection. So you see in the analyze result, we have the document result, we have the read results. The read, the read results is just like what some overall details, but we want the document results. Inside it has a doc type, it has fields, and then page page range again not something that we need we just need the fields and this are all the fields that we will need so what we'll do is we'll go back so you remember this receipt results document results fields so we'll do first receipt results dot document results and dot fields we need another first here dot actually this might not be the correct one we need a first here and then fields dot we'll do a merchant name dot text so it's Thai Thai restaurant and then what we also need is the, the value of this we just copy this paste it in here instead of merchant name we will get this in the let's do it total and dot text oh that's the total amount so yeah we got some results from the receipt you can get other results the other things that you can get along with it is also the, the the confidence levels as well so you can um look at the confidence levels you can determine if you want it above some percentage you can limit it to that and then based on that you can develop a model to either let it go through an approval go to the manager and then send it to the sharepoint list or um, add it to an expense report and then create an approval for the expense report and then send it to the manager so that is something that will depend on how it is and apply it in your business use case but i just wanted to show you how you can scan the seats using the form recognizer api power apps and power automate so that you can build this out without you know spending anything on understanding the the model that is used the ai model that is used for analyzing these receipts now form recognizer api is still in preview it's not in production yet so it's still something that i would say you can play around with but not probably ready to deploy into your business solutions you can probably test it with a few people but yeah i wouldn't go for a production version of it yet and the last thing that i want to share is how much money am i paying for this so the form recognizer API in itself is super cheap. That's like $5 per thousand pages. So you're almost paying like half a cent per page. So that's nothing, but you will need a power apps per app or a per user plan because you are doing HTTP request, which requires a premium uh, license. And you can only get that along with uh, power apps standalone license. You cannot use an Office 365 to do something like this. Now the form recognizer API does have a connector in flow, which is not premium, but it doesn't have the, the receipt analyzing capability. So let me show you that quickly here. So this is a form recognizer. If you search for that, there's a form recognizer action. And it has all these um, actions which are for training models and getting the keys and all that stuff, but it doesn't have the pre-built receipt model. 
hopefully if they have that there, then you won't need even a Power Apps standalone license. You can just use a Power Apps with Office 365 and then create this app calling this API. You just need to pay for the form recognizer API then, which is barely anything. So I hope this video helped you in understanding this whole kind of solution, which covers two or three products, but you can integrate them together, integrate with the data source, SQL, SharePoint, or CDS, and then build this whole solution around scanning receipts. I know a lot of you guys use it and you want to build it for your business. So this is, I think, one of the best ways you can deploy it for your business use cases. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and keep watching and keep building solutions using Power Platform. Thank you for watching.